Lesson 7. A Smooth Animation To follow along with this lesson, download the project from the previous lesson, OpenGL Lesson 6. In our last lesson, we demonstrated how to create a simple animation. That animation had some problems which we are now going to address. The first problem was that the drawing used a single buffer. The second problem was that the animation speed could vary greatly depending on the hardware. When we speak of single buffer drawing, we are referring to the color buffer, which is also known as the pixel buffer. OpenGL uses a few kinds of buffers, so we want to emphasize that this is a color buffer. The current color buffer holds image data in RGB format, which corresponds to the red, green, and blue color channels respectively. With a single buffer, the screen is constantly repainted from the color buffer. Whenever we draw to that buffer, the screen is updated directly. The problem with this is that the screen may get updated before the drawing is done. This can produce a flickery animation. To fix this, we use double buffering. With double buffering, we have two color buffers, a front and a back buffer. The screen image is taken from the front buffer, and we do our drawing on the back buffer. When we are finished drawing, we swap the front and back buffers, so the back image is now displayed. To switch to double buffering, we need to change the display mode. In line 36, we switch the mode from GLUT single to GLUT double. Then in line 19, we change GL flush to GLUT swap buffers. GLUT swap buffers replaces GL flush because along with swapping the buffers, it also calls GL flush. With this, our program will use double buffering instead of a single buffer. One last remark, double buffering is slower, so I also changed the value of delta x to compensate and speed up the animation. Now we can compile and execute our program and see our animation again. Other than the slower animation speed, not too much is noticeable. Double buffering isn't significant in this case, but it is important when drawing complex scenes. While double buffering helps our animation, we still have another problem in that the speed depends greatly on our hardware. There's no way to make all computers render at the same speed. However, we can slow down the faster computers so that all computers that are faster than a specified minimum render at the same speed. What we typically do in setting the animation delay is select a minimum hardware configuration that can render our animation at a reasonable target speed, say about 30 frames per second. Then we set a delay in our main rendering loop to slow all computers down to the targeted frame rate. To do this in GLUT, we use the GLUT timer func function. With this function, we can set a callback function that executes after a specified time. If we do this repeatedly, we can create a timed animation loop. We begin by creating a timer function that sends a redisplay message and then a timed callback to itself. This function will continually call itself every 30 milliseconds once it is called. To start the animation loop, we call the function once inside the main function. Finally, we remove the old call to glut post redisplay from the draw function since it will be called from the timer function instead. Our animation loop now looks like this. The timer function is called the first time in the main function. The timer function posts a redisplay message and then posts a time callback message for itself. The redisplay message causes draw to be called, which draws on the back buffer and then sets that buffer to be displayed in the window. At the end of 30 milliseconds, the function timer is called again and dispatches the redisplay and timer messages. Now we can compile and execute our program and we should see a nice smooth animation. If the animation is jerky, then you may need to reduce the speed by increasing the callback time for the timer. Also keep in mind that simultaneously running other applications will often slow down your computer.